I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into another episode of That Recap Show. Now, before we get into the episode, just want to issue major spoiler alert. We are going to be going over everything that happened in the season three finale of The Mandalorian. So if you haven't checked that episode out yet, you may want to pause this video, head over to Disney+, Plus, watch that, and then come back and enjoy the breakdown. Now, with that out of the way, let's start the show! Popping Off presents... That Recap Show. Break down everything from the season three finale of The Mandalorian. It's Johnny Rico. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? <laughs> doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. How about you? Oh, can't, can't, can't complain. <laughs> so season three finale is here. We finally got it. I, I was like, last night I was like, oh, I can't wait. I was like, should I stay up? Should I stay up and watch it or should I watch it in the morning? I decided to get some sleep, watch it in the morning. Um, I'm glad I did. It was, it was a good finale. I don't know if it's my favorite finale of the series of so so far. Um, but you know what? The one thing I'm not happy with. <laughs> I'm starting off on such a positive note. <laughs> I got a lot of problems with you people. Now you're going to hear about it. The one thing I'm not happy with is that all of my theories were wrong. <laughs> Every single one of them. Ones that I said... During our recap videos, ones that I just said back and forth with you when we were talking about it. Um, but mostly what I'm talking about is my theories about the armorer and your theories about uh, Axe and, and just like people maybe being spies slash traitors, um, you know, stuff like that. I was like, I feel like maybe we had designed a little bit better plot than, than what we had for the actual season finale. Now, it, it could turn out, eventually, it's just a long con, and the armor is still still working with the Empire in some way um, for another big, bigger, badder boss. Um, but <laughs> I was just hoping we were going to get some sort of flip and some sort of crazy reveal like that, where the armor was working all along, or Axe Wolves working all along, or something, you know, like, something like that. Um, solid season finale, though, as, as season finales go. I was not unhappy with how everything got tied up and and now everything resolved and everything like that so no no hate to the actual season finale it's just it's one of those cases where i feel like the theories that i was kind of spinning myself were a little bit more in i was a little bit more into them <laughs> than what we actually got um the one thing i have to mention is um when we had the scene where uh, Din and Grogu were, were looking for Moff Gideon, and we go into that one room with all of the clone pods and stuff like that. Um, sorry, Grogu. Uh, <laughs> we go into the room with all the, the clone pods and stuff, and we had that one that just kind of all of a sudden opens his eyes and we got that jump scare. Instantly reminded me of uh, the very first Resident Evil movie. When we have that jump scare where like they're they're investigating the, the, the hive building and stuff like that, and we have the one lady that opens her eyes and like kind of moves her hand or something against the glass um but that was my my first pop culture reference uh from this but but other than that i mean i know we're going to get into a lot more with big takeaways and stuff like that so i don't want to talk over some of those points but i i think as season finales go i think it was it was very solid and i was into it uh rico what were some of your initial impressions of the season three finale yeah, this was a, a a solid finale for them. Um, they do the the usual route we've gone the last few seasons, where you know episode seven gives us that big story driven episode that sets up the big action piece set finale, and this was no uh, no different than the last two seasons. Uh, two seasons, sorry. Um, but yeah, I would say you know predictably safe, predictably satisfying is a, is a pretty good way of describing this this finale overall. Uh, we got a wrap up of the story that was being told throughout the whole, not just this season, but really all three seasons. Um, and, and, you know, you got to see some, a really cool Mandalorian action against the Imperials, which is like a really, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, could there be more to uh, be left desired? Sure. Um, I almost like called that like the like for for fan expectations, almost like the MCU effect because we go oh, yeah. into all these thr- uh, theories that that can expand into the, the the wider universe and stuff like that. But I always think that Star Wars has done done a great job of keeping uh, every story contained within the show itself. Like if you're telling a story within the show, you're sticking to that show's story. Uh, even in Book of Boba Fett, when they had that little side uh, mission with Mando, it still brought itself back to wrap right. up the Book of Boba Fett story in its own way. Um, so yeah, I kind of I kind of do like that. I kind of like stayed self contained in that sense, and and wasn't just being like, hey. I, mean, I know we're ending this season, but you no, know, get ready for everything else that's going to happen, right? So, like, you know, I we got like a nice wrap up to the story. So, I actually kind of liked that part of it, but there were still some interesting decisions in the episode. I was like, hmm, okay, uh, but I wasn't mad at the episode overall. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I was trying to say too. It, it, it's not even any hate on the episode whatsoever. It's a solid, it's a solid season finale. Um, nothing nothing wrong with that i i really you know i understand exactly what you mean about mcu effect and stuff like that and expectations and everything that gets thrown around on, online and, and stuff like that with those type of movies and and tv shows and everything like that and sometimes we create this you know these rumors and these these plot lines and stuff like that that are way over expectations mm-hmm. of, for any series or any movie whatsoever um but yeah, I mean, it's always going to happen. I love reading those kind of things. And and I mean, in a, in a, like a, 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 another way, like that's the reason that, you know, we're doing this podcast is because we like to kind of, you know, theorize about some, the, some stuff. Now, we don't go super outlandish that like some of the other stuff that, you know, I'll read online week to week um, and stuff like that about movies and TV shows uh, will go. But I just, I think we, you know, the reason why we like doing a podcast like this is because we do you know we like to kind of throw around our thoughts we like to have you know opinions about what could potentially happen some predictions and, and stuff like that and sometimes we you know we weave a little bit more than you know makes sense for us to get basically and that's all i was trying to say is like you know having that plot where you know a character that was kind of you know a little shady throughout the entire series and, and especially this season um having them kind of make a a, a turn at the very end, you know, would have been crazy. It would have been a crazy, like, oh, shit moment type of thing. But the fact that we didn't get it didn't take away from the story or anything like that. No. I, we, we definitely got us all. I will have to say this, though. It definitely made me appreciate the armor a little bit better because when they're all flying into battle, she's the only one without a gun or, like, a, a or the dark saber or anything. She's just got, like, metal things that she's going to yeah, start hitting. The only thing she's with. ever needed are forging tools. Holy <laughs> shit. Like everyone else has laser guns and and uh, Bo-Katan has the dark saber. Like shit, <laughs> that's major props to her on that one though. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> but anyway, you you want to get to some big takeaways? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. All right, why don't you kick off big takeaways? Um, yeah. So I gotta kick this off with uh, a a big salute. Uh, in honor of the the dark saber, rest in peace to the dark saber. Uh, you know, in in the in the midst of a battle between you know Bo-Katan, Din, and 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 Moff Gideon, uh, he manages to take. I, I believe he grabs uh, Bo-Katan's hand and then squeezes it and, and forces it to crush. So that was yeah. a pretty pretty boss move on on Gideon's end. But just like right then and there, um, you know, we, we're that this legendary weapon right here behind me, right I, that I've grown to love ever since I've seen it for the first time. Uh, is it's just done, done so. And I understood what it represents, of course. Like you got Gideon also says that kind of right after it goes, you Mandalorians just rely so much on your trinkets and stuff like that. And the Dark Saber, of course, is a, a big representation of power within the Mandalore culture. And obviously, Bo-Katan uh, does a great job kind of countering back with that as like, you know, hey, we, you think we rely on just our our, our trinkets, but like we're we're stronger as, all together. And that's kind of the main point of her arc, right? So I thought yeah. that was a cool way to kind of be like, hey no one needs this anymore like din didn't want it uh even though bo katan thought she needed it she she truly didn't all she needed to do was just show that they need to work together um so like yeah i'm 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 a little upset that we're not gonna be able to see it uh, anymore or maybe we could there's still some ways you can uh rebuild it um but yeah i think the the what that moment represented was really cool um but other than that we got some really like fantastic action pieces throughout this whole episode. Um, obviously, one of my favorite shots you mentioned earlier 
uh, Bo Katan bringing the entire Mandalorian fleet down yeah. with the with the light uh, dark saber charging in was just in a fantastic sequence. And then of course seeing the fight within the uh, the uh, them all like fighting on their jetpacks themselves. Um, so that was really cool. But another uh, set piece I really liked was the uh, the, the lead up going into Moff Gideon's chamber where uh, Din is taking on the uh, the stormtroopers kind of level by level and having R five deactivate the shields and like as he gets through each little phase he's kind of like powering up a little bit like yeah. he takes one guy's down he gets his, gets his shield and he gets the other guy's weapon bring shield bass to them so that was really cool seeing the way they they did that and and then kind of seeing how Grogu played into the whole situation was really they actually used him in a really uh a fun way I thought um and he, of course he has that really great moment uh when the the, the big blast happens that he protects both yeah. Uh, Din and Bo with the Force, and kind of going back to that se- season one moment because he does the same thing, blocking the fire. So we get to see him do that, but this time we're also seeing some growth because uh, he doesn't get too tired after it happens. He just right. needs a little sit down, he doesn't need a whole nap. He's oh, <laughs> just he needs to take a little seat. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of little uh, fun uh, action seats, uh, action sets here, and I think that's what this finale did a great job of doing, which is displaying again the Mandalorians in action. Like at at the height of their power too. Now we're seeing all the fleets together as one, and they're pretty unstoppable. And that was pretty red. Yeah, absolutely. All of those those different tiny battle scenes were were awesome throughout. I loved exactly the the scene you mentioned where like Din was going through the different uh, shield barrier levels. Mm-hmm. It, another thing that it reminded me of just when you were describing, it, I didn't even think of this like when I was watching it was, I think it was in Deadpool two. Where he's where he's doing the the montage of taking out different bosses and stuff like that, and there's that one where it's like a building that's got different people, like different levels of people type of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, video game wise, I think that's exactly a, like a really cool like every level that he's upgrading his weapon type of thing. Like <laughs> that's to the end. Yeah, um, and he's the, got the uh, two blasters at the end. Yeah, the the Star Wars comparison I I want to make to is obviously I think the Phantom Menace because those are the same kind of shields yep. they're blocking Maul from uh from Obi-Wan after he kills Qui-Gon. I always think it was really cool the way they kind of used him like running through that to stop and they show how that kind of works. How those will stop just about anybody. So it's like, you got to just watch along while your boys get uh, destroyed by Mandalorian. And then you got to wait for your turn basically. So it's just like, okay. So I I really like that little uh, way. They, they always mirror Star Wars. There's another one here that I'll talk about a little bit uh, during your takeaway, but, uh, but the the way they mirror uh, Star Wars and and both new and the old is, it's just, fantastic and i always think that's like feloni being like you know this would be really cool if we did this like this a little bit yeah and also shout out to feloni for his cameo at the end of the episode too <laughs> in the background with this cowboy hat <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um that leads really into my takeaway because um what i wanted to, to kind of talk about was we had one i guess at this point disney franchise mirroring another disney franchise because i'm talking now i'm talking about star wars and the marvel universe mcu um during the fight with Mando and Moff Gideon, and to the same extent, bo and Moff Gideon, um, we have them kind of fighting, and we have, you know, Moff Gideon in the Mandalorian suit that he has made from Beskar. And, and so he definitely has other upgrades on it, because being able to crush not only bo hand, but the Darksaber hilt at the same time, he's got to have some sort of hydraulic in, in his arm oh, yeah. or, or something like that. Along with it, being at Beskar being as powerful as it is. Right. So exactly, exactly. But like on top of that, he had to have something to be able to crush oh, both sure. of them. Um, but that reminded me of the very first Iron Man, the end fight in, in the first Iron Man uh, movie between Tony and Obadiah, where Obadiah has that major mech suit that he is now created or not him himself, but the, uh, the engineers and stuff during at the Stark lab, uh, that he had been held, uh, I guess, captive, um, created for him, where all of his stuff was kind of one-upped Tony's suit type of thing. Um, and they basically had to use kind of, you know, their smarts to kind of get around things. And I guess in, in this circumstance, in the Mandalorian circumstance, you know, bo and Din had to kind of work together. And, you know, in the first fight, Din and Grogu had to kind of work a little bit together type of thing to kind of... Right you know, out, not so much outsmart Moff Gideon, but just kind of overpower Moff Gideon. But it just reminded me of that because, you know, we're kind of on an equal, we were kind of on an equalish playing field with Moff Gideon in that Beskar suit type of thing. And so that's why I kind of, it made it a, a parallel to that first Iron Man uh, end fight type of thing, to me at least. That, that was immediately how it stood out. I thought it was really cool that it did that. And not only, I mean, we had, we had uh, Favreau, who was, you know, 
directed the first Iron Man and directed Mandalorian. So I mean, it's connected there. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I mean that in the best way possible. I'm not talking about like copying or, or anything like that. I just, it, it oh, no. reminded me of that. I mean, the first Iron Man movie is one of my favorites it, anyway. So having that boss fight like that and having kind of, you know, having the level playing field villain versus hero situation, I kind of in, enjoyed all of that. What were you yeah. gonna say though? I know you said you had yeah. Yeah, so that 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 particular action sequence, um, when I was saw the visual of uh, of Gideon kind of talking to them, but in the background is all of the Mandalorians fighting with the stormtroopers and, and jetpacks and stuff like that. So you see like this aerial fight within the base. Um, I immediately thought of Return of the Jedi, where of course you have the Emperor sitting there, and then behind them you have the big space battle. So of course the, I gotta show the, the way that they mirror each other uh, always and. Uh, I think you can also like in the Back to Revenge of the Sith when when the Palpatine is watching Anakin and Obi Wan fight Dooku. So of course the way that they're always bringing it back to the uh, the past, right? And how yeah. again Star Wars likes to mirror itself in all of its uh, in all of its projects. And that that's immediately what I thought of is kind of like this, especially because it's the third season. It felt like kind of like the third part of the trilogy of the fight. So you had the first season of them doing the whole stuff on Navarro and him sh- shooting down his Tie Fighter, and then of course second season. The uh, the battle court aboard uh, Gideon's cruiser where they capture him, and then the third one is obviously the def- definitive battle between uh, those two, and it, I think it perfectly played into kind of like that Luke versus Vader fight uh, between yeah. those two guys where there was one definitive winner at the end this time. Which uh, yeah, I think that was kind of seeing the way that this whole everything kind of like called back to the old Star Wars movies. It was really cool. As soon as I watched it, I was like, oh, it's like Return of the Jedi. It's so cool. My favorite Star Wars movie, personally. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I mean. Look, I love any of the original trilogy, so I, I am definitely in on any of those movies. Anytime we're referencing any of those, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I think what's really cool is how they can mirror in in within the context of their own show. It doesn't it doesn't feel out of place, but there, you still can see that. that it's not too gratuitous. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I really like that. I think it was a, a very good way to do that and, and a subtle way to do that without you know making it overly like oh this is obviously that type of thing yeah. um but very cool um you want to get to some predictions yeah let's do it yeah, yeah, yeah all right i'm gonna kick off predictions because i was i was thinking about this as soon as it, it like the the finale ended and look i love things that ra- like I, I love that this wrapped up and, mm. and it was kind of in a nice bow number one i i I do hope that we have more Din and Bo-Katan interaction um, because I really did like them as a team. Um, and, and the way that things ended, you know, they're apart. I obviously understand that Bo-Katan is going to be rebuilding Mandalore and, right. you know, Din has now just uh, adopted, officially adopted Grogu and has now going to start the Mandalorian yeah. training and everything like that with Grogu <laughs> and everything like that. So that is definitely a quest that they're going to go on, but I'm hoping, you know, season four or the next time that we see Mando and Grogu and stuff, we can, they still have that relationship. Cause I really did like that relationship that built up this season between, and to an extent last season, but more this season built up between Mando and Bo-Katan where, yeah. you know, they did really learn to work together very well as a team. And we saw that in the final fight with Moff Gideon where like, you know, she said it, we're better, to, we're better working together. She Absolutely. said to and and I mean immediately that's when Mando entered entered the fight and that's kind of how they overtook Moff Gideon. Um, but I will say this: the finale left off on a very calm note. Like we literally had Mando, you know, relaxing on the front porch of his cabin that was given to him, mm-hmm. um, and Grogu, you know, practicing the Force. Basically, some of the exercises that Luke showed him how to do like lifting the frog out of the water and, and stuff like that. So we have Grogu training Mando watching and, and kind of just relaxing type of thing. And I think that this was very intentional to have a very calm note ending because I really think this is an ending to go. This is the calm before the fucking storm, like the storm that's going to start happening that we know only because it was announced at the Star Wars Celebration that Thrawn is now going to be entering this this giant uh, Mandoverse type of thing and is going to be this looming threat in the future. Um, I, I think this is a very intentional way of wrapping things up on a very calm note to say, like, 
this is peaceful, but the thing that's going to bring our characters back together, our, our stuff back in, is going to be this major threat that's going to happen, you know, a few years down the line, because, I mean, we're going to have to go through the Ahsoka series, we're going to have to go through other things that are going to happen in the meantime, before that movie happens, before everything happens, but I think we're going to see that things are going to go crazy after this, and that's what's going to bring Mando and Grogu back into everything, and so I think... It's a very intentional and a very good way to end this finale just because I think, you know, they're not going to get comfortable, but at the same time, this is a, they're very comfortable right now at this official ending of this season. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, what threat kind of brings them back in type of thing. And, and so, it, I mean, it's very open ended of what, you know, could bring them back into everything and what could really, you know, start to pull them back in that major threat but we know that thrawn is the overarching looming major threat overall eventually but uh rigo what were some of your predictions moving forward i guess after this finale yeah i don't i don't really know just because i'm the one thing i'm waiting for is ahsoka like yeah. I think i'm waiting for that just to to, to kind of amplify this this bigger story that's gonna start to, to take place here um but i i am looking forward to Kind of seeing how uh, uh, Din working with the the, the New Republic is going to play out, especially yeah. like on this case by uh, case by case basis, as he said. Um, so of course, like you know what I thought was really funny and a little bit weird about that final shot is like, you no, know, you have him sitting there chilling in front of his cabin. Of course, still just has helmet on, so he's just, he's, he's still living by by that uh, rule set apparently. But um, it did that like tight shot in on Grogu before they went full to black, and is that like from like the Babe movies, like that pig movie? <laughs> Where they would do that and it'd be like the little rats and then they would do that and then they would like end the chapter is that what they just did to us at the end of the of mandalorian finale uh that was so like weird to me like there's a few things in, in that those like like little epilogue shots are a little weird to me like like the adoption scene i was like haven't we kind of like already figured that they were already father and son that we really need to have like this like formal discussion about it like even i think earlier on uh the armor was already saying that grogu was like the uh, din's son so but I guess now he's Din Grogu, so I guess that's also. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, wait, what? What's the whole Din thing? Like, I, I don't know how that works now. I uh, guess that means the family name is Din. Din, and... I guess. So it was, I don't know. Nah, yeah, it doesn't make a yeah. whole ton of sense to me. But um, uh, we got the 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 memory slot for IG11 back, so now he's the new marshal. So yep. you know, you, there's there's always that little rabbit hole we can go down with those little characters, and uh, yeah, I. I, I want to see what's going to happen with like the relationship with him and the Mandalorians. Of course, like they said, he has got to go out and do his, his adventures with his new, uh, new apprentice. But like, does that mean he can't come back or was, what, what's the deal with that? <laughs> like, so I think this, I think what it did is like, this, this felt like a, like a series finale for me. Like if they were going to say we're done with the Mandalorian and like, you're just going to see these characters and other adventures. Like, yeah, I'd be totally fine with that. Cause now you have them starting their new life, kind of going back to his old ways of bounty hunting, but in a, in a more serious way. Uh, but also like the story of the Mandalorians, I feel like is like, what more can you tell? Maybe you set up next season and maybe do something with the mythosaur. Like, you know, we saw that one shot of him still underneath the water and yep. what seemed like some kind of a connection with him and Grogu. I don't know why they did that, but I think that was, that was definitely intentional. Um, so yeah, maybe there's going to be something that happens on Mandalore that forces them to come back and they can revisit, revisit that storyline. Um, but I just thought of this right now with the the dark saber. Of course, uh, we have a character coming into Ahsoka named Hu Yang. It's a it's a droid character voiced by David Tennant. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if you know from the Clone Wars, this character was known for kind of taking uh, Jedi Padawans and helping create their lightsabers. So oh. there's your way where if you if you didn't destroy the crystal that was inside the dark saber, maybe there was some way that Hu Yang could possibly. Uh, you know, help reforge a new lightsaber with the same blade or, you know, just make a new hilt for it. Uh, who knows? But maybe there's still a way that you can bring back the dark saber in some form, unless that is, you know, destroying it is really the way of just saying, Hey, we're done with like this, this, you know, you know token of power that is the dark saber. And we're moving on as like a one strong community. You no, know, it's like, you know, Asgard is not a place. It's a people it's like Mandalore is not a place. It's the people. Uh, so I think it's that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what they do with that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you on the type of finale that we got. It could have felt like a, a series finale, not a season finale. 
But I think the reason they kind of left it so open-ended is because now they can explore what's going to happen and go like catastrophically wrong um, in Ahsoka and, and, and moving forward from there to have like Thrawn really enter, you know, and then be this kind of looming threat. We can get those disaster stuff coming forward, but we're not, they're not like putting it all into a box and, and making things have to happen a certain way by having a very calm ending because we know, you know, it didn't say they're done. They could be, but it didn't say they were done. But the fact that they kind of left it so calm right there is anything could happen to, to pull them back in type of thing or to, to, to have a kickoff for an, a fourth season. You know what I mean? Yeah. I looked at it as it's very open-ended and it's very open-ended intentionally because you know we're going to see these characters again. There's no way we're not going to see Mando and Grogu again, whether it be in Ahsoka, whether it be in the movie where, where Thrawn is the, the major threat, oh, yeah. the, the Infinity War Endgame type, style movie type of thing. But it also leaves it open to, you know, what the aftermath could be from these other series that affects a season four for Mando. So I think they left it very safely open-ended so that they can, like, if something, if they write something from another season that involves Mando and Grogu, they can easily divert a season four idea into that. That's something, what I think. Yeah, something's got to happen that leads to obviously the formation of the first order. We got we had right. General Brendel Hugs last episode, right? Um, and I think obviously the the point of showing the Shadow Council in general is showing that there are other warlords to worry about, even yeah. past Gideon. So, um, yeah, I think we'll see how the way they factor in all these other guys later on for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm excited for it. I, I would love a season four. I would love to see, you know, Mando and Grogu pop up and anything else that we can have them that makes sense for them to be in. Um, the sky's the limit, though. Um, but as we always say, that's what we think. Let us know in the comments below. What did you think of the season three finale? And what do you think is going to happen next? Are you excited for Ahsoka? Can you not wait? Like, I can't wait. I think it's here in August. I can't wait for August. I can't wait for, like, the over-looming threat of Thrawn. Anything can happen. It's going to be crazy. We cannot wait. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications to hear about all of our latest audio and video podcast releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.